Good afternoon class. Uh, our lesson for today is all about forensic chemistry and toxicology. Again, this is a continuing of our lecture last week, part 1.1 lecture. Uh, let's begin. So again, it's still in, we are discussing on the brief history of forensic medicine in the Philippines. So 1945, after the deliberation of Manila, the Marshal of the U.S. Army created the Criminal Investigation Laboratory with the Office of the Medical Examiner as integral part with Dr. Mariano Lara as the Chief Examiner. So, once again, June 1947. So, in this, in this date, in year, the Public Act Number 157 was created. The Bureau of Investigation was passed. So, the Bureau of Investigation was created by virtue of an executive order by the President of the Philippines. Under this Bureau, a medical division was created with Dr. Enrique V. De Los Santos as chief. So, all provincial, municipal, city health officers, physicians of hospitals, health centers, asylum, penitentiaries, and prisons and colonies are ex-officio medical legal officers. Remember it is. Remember it class. So, in remote places where the service of registered physician is not available, Surano Manis Manislante may perform medical legal works. However, after the approval of Republic Act 1982 on June 5, 1954, which provided for the creation of rural health unit to each municipality composed of municipal health officers, public nurse, while Midwife and sanitary inspector, which abolished the Sirohano Mahinstrante, making qualified physician to perform medical legal functions. So, June 18, 1949. So, in this year, Republic Act Number no. 409, which was later amended by Republic Act 1934, provides the creation of Office of Medical Legal Examiners and Criminal Investigations. Laboratory under the Police Department of the City of Manila. December 23, 1975, Presidential Degree Number 856 was promulgated and the following and provides the following. Number 1, person authorized to perform autopsy are only the health officers, medical officers of law enforcement agencies, members of medical staffs of accredited hospitals. Autopsy shall be performed by by the following cases. So, whenever required by special laws upon order of a competent court, mayor or provincial or city fiscal upon written request of police authorities. Whenever the solicitor general, provincial or city fiscal deem it necessary to the center and take position for the remains for examination to determine the cause of death. And whenever the nearest kin shall request in writing the authorities concerned to ascertain the nature and cause of death. So remember it class, ha? autopsy shall be performed by in these following cases. So, history of forensic toxicology in foreign approach. So, Embers Peperos, 1500 BCE, also known as Peperos Embers, is an Egyptian medical Peperos of herbal knowledge so herbal knowledge Egyptian among the oldest and most important medical papery of ancient Egypt it is it also contains 110 pages of anatomy physiology toxicology spells and treatment the second is myth Redatis, the six 131 BC BCE the king of Pontos he is the king of Pontos he tested antidotes and taken repeated small doses to become invulnerable to assassination by poison. According to a legend mentioned in the Jain text, Changragupa Guru and advisor Chanakya used to feed the emperor with small doses of poison to build his immunity against possible poisoning attempts by enemies. So, Mitridatic this term means tolerance or immunity to a poison acquired by taking larger or gradual doses came from his name. 
So, another personnel is Lucius Cornel Cornelius Sula, 138-78 BCE, commonly known as Sula, was a Roman general who made a law which states it is illegal for people, including prisoners, to be poisoned and also prohibited by buying, selling, and possess possessing poison. So, he is Lucius Cornelius Sula. So, Cleopatra, 69 BCE. An Egyptian queen, famous in history as she was part of a dynasty of Macedonian rulers founded by Ptolemy, who served as general under Alexander the Great during his conquest of Egypt in 322 BC, became a lover of Julius Caesar and later wife of Mark Antony. Later on, she, uh, she experimented on poisons to the prisoners and poor, and later committed suicide by the bite of, a, of the snake. So, Democritus, he was the first chemist to study poison. So, once again, take note of this. Who was the first chemist to study poison? It is Democritus. So, 1775 in this year, first breakthrough with arsenic poisoning. poisoning. Carl Wilhelm Skelly discovered a way to exchange arsenic trioxide to arsenic gas by treating with nitric acid and combined with zinc. So, 1806, Dr. Valentin Rose showed how arsenic could be detected in human organs just in time or the sensational murder trial of a female serial prisoner, Anne Skolebeni Janziger. So, Bernardino Ramazzini, 1633. He was considered the father of occupational health. So, who is the father of occupational health? So take note, it is Bernardino Ramanzini. He is an Italian physician considered a founder of occupational medicine. A professor of medicine at the University of Modena, 1682 uh, on 1700. An, an early student of epidemiology, he described outbreaks of Latin Ricism, 1690 and malaria, 1690-95. In Italia, he wrote the De Morbis Artificum Dea Triba in 1760, which means disease of workers. So, the first comprehensive work on occupational disease outlining the health hazard of irritating chemicals, dust, metals, and other abrasive agents encountered by workers in 52 occupations. He served as a professor of medicine at the University of Padua from 1700 until his death. So, Gilia Tofana, 1635 to 1719, was an Italian profes professional prisoner, poisoner. Uh, she was famous for selling poison to women who wanted to murder their abusive husbands. She was the inventor of the famous poison Aqua Tofana, which is named after her. So, what is Aqua Tofana class? It is uh, a po poison contain most uh, mostly arsenic and lead and possibly belladon belladonna. It was a colorless, tasteless liquid and therefore easily mixed with the uh, with red water or wine to be served during meals. So, Matteo Orfila 1815, often called as the father of toxo toxicology. So, take note: who is the father of toxicology? Is Matteo Orfila. He was the first great 19th in 19th century exponent of forensic medicine. Orfela worked to make chemical analysis a routine part of forensic medicine and made studies of asphyxiation to the, the composition of bodies and exhumation. So Orfela published the first complete work of poisons named Treaty Dis. Poison. So take note, treaty this poison. In 1813, Orfila analyzed poison effects on humans and created a method of detecting the presence of arsenic within murder victims. So commonly, yung mga murderer or mga killer na to, ang ilang gagamiton is arsenic. So in 1830s, British chemist James Marsh found a method to detect arsenic in the body and the method got known as the Marsh test. So, Edward Jokes and F. Bosch, 1822, they simultaneously invented gastric lavage. Gastric lavage is also commonly called as stomach pumping or gastric irrigation 
is the process of cleaning out the contents of the stomach. Since its first recorded use in early 19th century, it has become one of the most routine means of eliminating poisons from the stomach. Jean Stas, 1850. So this is, uh, he became the first person who successfully isolated plant poison from human tissue. He was able to provide evidence against Belgian Count Hippolyte Bizarre de Bocamni, who killed his brother-in-law to gain some money. This is the first exact proof of alkaloids in, in forensic medicine. So, Fritz Hubbard, 1868-1931. So, he developed chlorine and cyanide gases. These poison gases were used as blistering agents during World War One. So, Unsaman to ng mga gases na gigamit sa World War One as blistering agents. So, right to remember, it's chlorine and cyanide gases. Kinsa, kinsa ang nag-discover si Fritz Haber. So, take note of that class. So, Minamata disease or the dancing cat fever, 1950. First discovered in Minamata City, Japan. It was caused by the, the release of metal mercury from the Chiso Corporation Chemical Factory. This highly toxic chemical, so highly toxic chemical can be bioaccumulated by shellfish and fish and was conceived by the local people. The mercury poison went on 36 years, so dugay kay siya, 36 years, saya siya nawala para karon sa atong pandemic. Ayan nawala ang the dancing cat fever, remember it is class ha? So, London Great Smog, 1952, the little smog that covered the city of London for 5 days, December to 5, 5 to 9 in 1952, caused by a combination of industrial pollution so, and high pressure weather condition. This combination of smoke and fog brought the city to a near standstill and resulted in thousands of deaths. So, another historic event is Talit Dumaid Tragedy, 1959. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, the use of Talit Dumaid in 46 counties by women who were pregnant or who subsequently became pregnant resulted in the biggest man-made medical disaster ever. So, biggest man-made medical disaster ever. It became apparent in the 1960 that Talit Dumaid treatment resulted in severe birth defects in thousands of children. So, na mga birth defects paggamit ni Manisha na uh, medicine. So, in this illustration, Manisha, ang mga defects sa mga bata na ang ilang mama nag-take o talid dumide. So, kita ninyo. Okay, class. So, Lake News Disaster 1986. On 21 August 1986, a limnic eruption at Lake News in northwestern Cameroon killed 1,746 people and 3 1,500 drive stock. Sus, kaya kayo. The eruption triggered the sudden release of about 100,000 to 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide. So, this poisoning is caused by carbon dioxide. So, these are the illustration. Uh, livestock, then tao, tungod sa yung carbon dioxide na form siya o inami. So, that is all for our lecture today class. So we will continue our lecture next week. And we will we will have a short quiz about our lecture today. Thank you and God bless.